The current economic situation is hitting all American workers hard, especially from high taxes and inflation. We need to address these problems to help all all Americans prosper. Hello, welcome to episode 70 of this week's economy. I hope you're having a prosperous day. I'm your host, Dr. Vance Ginn, president of Ginn Economic Consulting, contributor at more than 15 free market think tanks, and former chief economist of the White House's Office of Management and Budget. Thank you for joining me again today. We're going to dive directly into free market capitalism and a whole bunch of other things, uh, making sure that we get government out of the way so that you have more opportunities to prosper. Because remember, at the end of the day, free market capitalism is the best path to prosperity. So number one, getting rid of taxes on tips. The issue has been that with the Republican National Convention taking place this week, it's an opportune time to discuss Trump's proposals and our and the RNC platform, particularly his proposal to exempt tip income from federal taxes. You know, the money that you make if you're a waiter and you get tips or all the the apps, it seems, that have tips as being the next button whenever you go to pay for basically anything these days. Well, President Trump has said we should not tax those at all. The Committee for Responsible Federal Budget estimates that this would reduce federal revenues by as much as $250 billion. Similarly, Senator Ted Cruz of Texas is leading the charge with the No Tax on Tips Act in Congress, supported by many groups, including the National Restaurant Association and even some of my friends at Americans for Tax Reform and others. But my view is, is that exempting tips does nothing to address the root cause of our economic problems, which is government spending. It could even worsen the situation by significantly reducing incentives to work in non-tip jobs as it, as it picks tipped jobs, tipped workers as winners and others as losers. This tax idea also narrows the income tax base, shifting the burden of government spending on others and keeping tax rates higher than otherwise. As a reminder, sound tax policy is the largest tax base with the lowest flat rate. This gets away from that by narrowing the tax base instead. The current economic situation is hitting all American workers hard, especially from high taxes and inflation. We need to address these problems to help all all Americans prosper. Expanding the Trump era tax cuts would help along with reforming the tax code to remove credits and deductions that narrow the tax base and reduce tax rates instead. We should be broadening the tax base as much as possible. Congress must also cut federal spending and pass sustainable budgets to address the ammunition of debt given to the Fed to print money and create inflation, as I've mentioned numerous times before. Number two, Power struggles in Houston, Texas. The issue after Hurricane Burl hit the Gulf Coast, Texas Gulf Coast on July 8th, 2024, over 3 million individuals were left without power and many remain without power. This is another example how Texas faces ongoing challenges to its electrical grid. Governor Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Patrick have come out swinging against the government creating a monopoly provider of electrical wires and poles of Centerpoint Energy, as there will be an investigation of why it has taken so long for Texans to regain power. My view, Texas is one of the most vibrant and attractive states in the United States, but the electrical electricity market represents significant challenges. Texas must refine its energy strategy, emphasizing market-driven solutions like unleashing nuclear power and ending tax breaks and low-interest loans like the Texas, Ener- uh, the Texas Energy Fund to energy companies to ensure a more level playing field. Moreover, the state should deregulate the electricity market and remove barriers creating monopolies like Centerpoint Energy for a competitive electricity market. We should also acknowledge government failures of not only creating a monopoly in Houston, but also the lack of removing debris and receiving federal funds for so many natural disasters when Texas would be better served dealing with these situations within civil civil society where Texans can help Texans uh, and get government out of the way. By championing policies that reduce government involvement and promote market activity, Texas can strengthen its infrastructure to support its growing population and sustain its status as a beacon of prosperity and freedom. Number three, school choice. The issue? Republican Party announced support for universal school choice in the Republican National Convention. The Dallas Express reports that Texas Senator Brian Hughes expects the statehouse to pass school choice next legislative session. My take? 
Too many kids are failing in, in, in these government schools, and many families feel stuck within the current monopoly government school system. School choice programs have been shown to increase student performance, graduation rates, and overall satisfaction. By allowing families to select schools that best meet their kids' needs, we can ensure that all tr- children have access to high-quality education, regardless of socioeconomic status. Universal Education Savings Accounts, known as ESAs, allow tax dollars to be used for more productive purposes for K-12 education, empowering parents to choose the best educational options for their children. This should also be a path to reform school finance systems in Texas and beyond by ending the antiquated school finance formulas and replacing them with a universal ESA approach so that money follows the student, not systems. Number four, inflation. The issue? The Bureau of Labor Statistics has recently reported that the producer price index showed that wholesale price inflation reached its highest rate since March 2023 in June. The report noted, quote, and on an unadjusted basis, the index for final demand rose 2.6% for the 12 months ended in June, the largest advance since moving up 2.7% for the 12 months ended March 2023, close quote. However, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell claimed that the Fed has made, quote, considerable progress, end quote, toward defeating the worst inflation spike in four decades. My take? The Federal Reserve has long been behind the curve in addressing inflation, which it created. It remains elevated well above the Fed's target of 2%. The core issue lies in the Fed's bloated balance sheet of $7.2 trillion, which has been declining, but not quickly enough to counteract historic increases where it it was $4 trillion before the pandemic back in 2020. And so I see this large increase here of the money supply and too little uh, production of goods and services, too much money chasing too few goods. You're going to hear rapid inflation. And I still think it's going to be around for a while. The Fed should not cut, even if Trump says don't cut until after the elections. That's that's political. Economically, we shouldn't cut because inflation is just too high. These actions of more inflation and everything else in America has resulted in Americans losing purchasing power because too much money is chasing too few goods. To fix this, Congress must, must take practical steps to reduce spending and remove the ammunition it's giving the Fed to keep a bloated balance sheet, thereby creating inflation and passing strict fiscal and monetary rules. Rem- recall that average hourly earnings and average weekly earnings adjusted for inflation still remain well below where it was in January of 2021 when Biden took office. So this is not a good situation. And it's why about half of Americans believe that we're in a recession, even though a lot of the numbers and data indicate that we're not. Number five, the federal de- deficit. The issue within the Republican National Convention this week, the federal de- deficit must be discussed. I haven't heard it be discussed really at all so far, unfortunately, but I'm hopeful that it will by the time that this comes out. The deficit in June was $66 billion with a B. Bloomberg reports that interest payments on outstanding debt continue to drive the federal government's budget deficit to $1.27 trillion for the fiscal year through June. That Remember, it doesn't end until September, so we still have three more months left to go. It's going to be closer to $2 trillion by the end of the fiscal year. During Biden's presidency, the federal debt has increased by more than $7 trillion. My take? Congress must address its spending problem and tackle the federal deficit. Overspending has a trickle-down effect requiring governments to raise taxes on citizens by either raising taxes, increasing debt, or creating inflation. It changes price signals from government action instead of allowing voluntary transactions by people in the marketplace to allocate scarce resources best. This hurts the potential of entrepreneurs to grow their businesses, leading to uncertainty and the burden of high taxes paid by American households, reducing the potential for economic growth and prosperity. Americans are already seeing the impact of increasing inflation and Republicans should push for less spending. Historically, that has been the case, but unfortunately, we haven't seen or heard about that much recently. So what about my media hits and events? Well, check out my interview with Austin Peterson on his show, Wake Up America, as we discuss the Republican, um, as we discuss the, the Republican uh, VP pick of Senator J.D. Vance and much more. It's going to be interesting now with another Vance being a top name that's out there. And so I'm interested to see what happens. Look, I liked a lot from Hillbilly Elegy and 
the things that he went through in his early life actually reflect a lot of my life coming up poor and going through a lot of the situations that he did. Um, but unfortunately, he has moved more toward the populist agenda and more toward national conservatism of bigger government, which is the old progressive sort of approach. And I think we need a more free market limited government approach that was more about the deregulation, the tax cuts and jobs acts and things of that nature of the Trump administration than going towards protectionism, um, labor union increases in growth and more spending in the process. That's going to lead us down a worse path. So I'm concerned about this pick of J.D. Vance, but we'll see in the next couple of months how that goes down overall. What about on a Let People Prosper show? Um, well, don't miss the latest episode, 105, uh, with Dr. Leah Palagashvili. We had a great discussion on pro-worker approach for good jobs. Um, so be sure to follow her on Substack as well, as she has a, a an excellent Substack newsletter there. This upcoming Monday's episode 106 of the Let People Prosper show is with Dr. Meg Tazinski, Managing Director of the Bridwell Institute for Economic Freedom and the Cox School of Business at Southern Methodist University. We discuss economic, economic freedom and how it improves the careers of women and men. You don't want to miss it. The quote of the week is by, guess again, Milton Friedman, quote, the most important single central fact about a free market is that no exchange takes place unless both parties benefit, end quote, So wise words there by Milton Friedman. The Bible verse of the week is 1 Corinthians 13, 6, quote, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, end quote. So true. I hope that that's true for you as well. And in conclusion here today, thanks for tuning in to episode 70 of this week's economy. I hope these issues help you better understand our world. Please like, subscribe, and share this episode. For more episode, for more insights, go to vanceskin.substack.com where I have all my show notes or go to vanceskin.com where you can find out more information about me, have me on your podcast, or speak at one of your events. And ultimately, get a paid subscription to my Substack so you can help me provide more information like this to a broader audience. And God bless you and let people prosper. Um.